Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. So I got these really great stamps from the Rubbernecker people. They are so wonderful and so sweet and so thoughtful, and these are some of the stamps that they sent me. Create, Believe, and Dream, and I thought what I would do is make a cover for a legal notepad, and I made my... Um, uh, like an embossed, a white embossed on the background, and I thought I would do some navy blues and then make the background have, um, sorry, had to get this out, have this kind of paper around it. So I'm not sure how much of it'll show, but I thought it would be fun to do something like that. And then I'll, uh, do that ombre effect where it's going to be just using the different colors of inks and I thought I would either go with just uh, chip sapphire and stormy sky or I would use faded jeans in there somehow but for now we're going to go with stormy skies and I had one of these uh, um, Tim Holtz distressers and I don't know what happened to it but I made some orders from Tupelo Designs this month and so they sent me some they sent me one of these and two of the little things free for every order I made and that was great so in the month of January sorry I'm too late in telling you that now but in the month of January that's what they had to offer I don't have these colors in my smaller ink pads otherwise you know how I like to go directly to the paper with uh, you know with the ink pad but like I said I don't have it and this is that rubbery craft mat I got on eBay and I'll put the information on that down below I'm not really a fan of using these distressers for some reason I just am not good at getting enough of a design <laughs> so I'm going to Sandy system and just really coating that up with this color and this is uh, the stormy sky. Um, I do like doing this technique with the um, with the ink pad upside down. Honestly, for me, it is a lot easier. And this is our darkest, and it's chip sapphire. When I have a horrible mess and I need to do something about it uh, in a hurry, that's what I do. Is I just turn to my uh, handy stash of uh, baby bibs and then when I have something like this where I just want to wipe it off I just uh, use one of these little uh, baby washcloths they're nice because they're a small size and this has got a lot of different inks on it but I'm going to be as I said um, I reuse it so I just wash them and they they're handy I like them I thought I would show you how I have figured out over the years to lay down when you have something you're going to line and you have a huge piece like this that you're going to be backing. So I've already put uh, sticky tape across the whole thing. And what I've done is I've butted my paper trimmer up against one side and I've butted this notepad up against the bottom. That way I've got two sides that are definitely going to stop any of the paper from being out of where it should be. It should be putting it into alignment. So what I try to do is I try to angle it so that I get the very bottom and that back edge where right there so that the two of them are straight and hopefully it will be mostly straight. Now it might not be perfect and if it's not, and it's not, I've already allowed for that in the the dimensions I cut my paper at. So uh, I've made my paper a little bit longer and a little bit wider just in the event I m might have a problem like with that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do the bottom. I'm talking to myself now. We're going to do the bottom first. Now what we need to do is figure out where do we want or what do we want to be on the face of this. Um, we want to see exactly what we can get into as far as words onto the front of our card. And it looks like 
might be tight, but I think I could get even create on the front. So um, the other thing I looked at is I don't like the ombre effect of this. I think with the background, I don't like it. It just doesn't work for me. So let me get my um, mat back up here and I'll just go over that dark, darkest color with, I think it's a chip sapphire is the darkest. And we'll just color it all up so it's all nice dark color and everything looks the same. Now, I think the thing to do, our next step is going to be to measure our front of our card and or our, the length that we want our pad to be. Okay, there's my mark. So that is where we need to do our first score because what we're going to do now is we're making the front of our pad. Then we need to measure from the top and see how uh, thick that is. That's a quarter of an inch. So I think I'm going to go with five eighths of an inch from front to back with, uh, with our score mark. So we're going to want to put a score mark Then I need to make another one that's going to be 5 eighths of an inch away from that mark. Okay. I think that should work. Get our scoreboard out. Next step is to decide where we want to attach our other piece to. Because remember, our papers are only 12 inches long and our um, our back that we're going to need, we're going to need it to be that long. I'm going to put a mark right there and that's where we're going to cut the second piece at. Let's see how this works now. Okay, so we've got our pad. I'm going to get my T ruler. And this makes it a lot easier to do fold when you have double paper. Because we have double paper here, we want to make sure that we can really get a good fold on it. And this is a good way to do it. So we've got that would be our back fold. Our first fold. And then I'm going to do another fold right here. And hopefully, hopefully, that'll work. Let's see how this works. We'll put this in and see if it lines up. It lines up really nicely on the front. So let's uh, decide about cutting this down. I think I'm going to do that. Cut a little bit off because I think it's just a titch too long but it's just enough that it's going to look it's going to uh, fold the whole background is going to fold or the whole front of it is going to it's just not going to look right it's going to look really bad if I do if I don't cut off that teeny tiny little strip so let's look at how we stand with our front now I'm going to put that piece in I'm going to fold it over it's still kind of wide or thick, but that would give us room to put something else in the front if we wanted to. Okay, so let's say that we go with that, and then our paper, I think our paper, I think it's a pretty good length. So then our paper is going to only be that much too long, okay? Then on our backing, all we need to do is make sure that it's um, as long as the front, and then we want to uh, we're going to want to trim it off. Now I think if I just line it up with the top and uh, cut it the same le length as the front, we'll probably be in better shape. I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to just cut that piece. 
this actually gives us the ability now to know exactly how many of those words we'll be able to fit once I get this done. The other thing that this does is all these pieces that we're cutting give us um, extra backing for us to put our pad on because what I want to do with the pad is I want to attach it so that it can be replaced. So you can pull it in and out and the way you do that is just by using um, extra paper underneath and, and fold it under. So we're going to create our pad and, or our backing and let me get the paper I need and I'll be right back. Now that we've got the the, the everything kind of piece together. This is uh, about a 10 inch piece that I had left over that I uh, backed with the other um, paper again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this over like this. I'm going to give it a little bit of extra, I put that ruler in there to give it a little bit of extra wiggle room. Because what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to be able to take this paper this cardboard in and out and replace the notepad so if you you know like if you want to use this more than once after the notepads go done this is the way to do it you don't want it so that it won't uh, you know it can't come in and out let me make sure I have enough wiggle room on these I'm just folding them down, just making sure. Okay, so then what you want to do is you just kind of want to, holding it up, you just want to do this and slide it and see if it will slide up and down, and it does. So now we can just put our backing, our uh, double-sided tape on this, and then we will put this onto our backing, and or our back of our paper, and we'll be ready to roll. Our project is almost is almost at the finish line. I'm not going to make you watch me do this. I'll uh, come back once it's done. So I think I'm going to go with this version that says beautiful on it. And I think if I put it like right over the top, I don't think you're going to notice it that much. So I'm going to put it right on the edge. And it should be wide enough. Oops. Of course it just flew everywhere. Let me see if I can get the whole word in there. I just wanted to have enough that I would go over the top edge like that and then over the back edge. Make sure that the whole seam is reinforced and um, if you look at it from the top it says beautiful. It's beautiful. Sure, it is beautiful. So let's go to our project here and see where we want to set that. Let's put that right there, I think. So I'm going to just, I think I'm going to glue that down with a little tear tape and some wet glue. So here we have it. We open it up and there's our legal pad inside. It's nice and sturdy and if we wanted to we could put a pen holder on here. I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I might change my mind on that. You never know because I am prone to do that from time to time. Okay so as in all things I changed my mind about the pen holder so I want to put that in and what I did is I did about a one inch wide by three inch long piece of that cardstock that I doubled over any of the leftovers I keep so that I can play with later and what you want to do is you wrap it around your pen at the thickest point and then you want to line up your two ends like that so that they are well adhered to each other and make sure that your glue that you put in there and in my case I use that the tear tape make sure that your glue does not go into this circle because if it does your pen's going to stick and you don't want that so right now it's really well adhered to my pen and I'm going to bend it just a little bit because I'm going to glue or attach it to the book and I put some tear tape on the back as well and we're going to put it on the back cover 
because that's the easiest place and since our other pad, our pad is already attached in there, we want to make sure that our pen is not in the exact same spot as our um, as our uh, thing that holds our pad in place. So I'm going to push it in like that, push it down, and now our pen is in place and it matches and you can pull it in and out and you still will be able to move your pad you know you'll still be able to pull your pad out just by uh, you know taking it off of the top part and sliding it out and our pen is in secure and for good and I mentioned that I was going to show you something I bought from Stamp Panda, Stamp Panda. It, they make these uh, stamps that um, are personalized I found them on um, Zoo Lily but then I found them through Oh geez, I'll link it in the in the notes but here is the the stamp I made and I'll find something to stamp it on. Well, it's already stamped right there, but I'll stamp it right here for you. Made for you by Sandy Parker. Can you see that? I'll pull it up really close so you can. Isn't it the cutest thing? I love it. Anyway, I had that made. It's way bigger than my other stamps I had made, but I love it. I thought it'd be really great on projects that I'm going to make as gifts to send them, you know, that I would have that little... Uh, you know attach a little note that says that anyway um, I had that done and I hope you enjoyed this uh, different use for embossing the embossing distress look and I hope that you will give me a thumbs up and subscribe and tell your friends about me on social media or oh, tell one friend that's all I care about I really appreciate it and thanks so much for watching bye bye